A year ago, the Galveston Houston Archdiocese released its list of priests who were credibly accused of abuse. Some of the abuse happened long ago, and some of the priests on the list have died. But others are still being taken care of by the church, though exactly where they are isn't all that clear. And as Channel 2 investigator Robert Arnold reports, that's a problem for some abuse victims. This is a breaking news alert. I'm joining you right now because the Archdiocese has just released a long-awaited and long-promised list. A year ago, there was a hope for justice for the victims of clergy sexual abuse. There are 42 names on the list, and we're going to begin with John Keller. We want to substantiate what uh, those young people who suffered, what the victims, what the survivors, that's what today is all about. But one year later, what has come of these revelations? That over 40 priests from the Galveston-Houston Archdiocese were accused of the unthinkable. Where are they? The victims were promised healing, support, and transparency. We at SNAP are calling for true transparency, not the opaque transparency of a stained glass window from a church in denial. Eduardo Lopez de Casas is a co-leader of a Houston support group for victims of clergy abuse. He grew up in the church, almost never missing a Sunday, even in his darkest times. I was abused over 40 years ago, and I never left the church. Eduardo went to work in the church as a music director, most recently at Prince of Peace in Tomball. The amazing thing is that when I went to work there, I did not know anything about the person that was to become my boss, which was John Keller. Keller was removed from the church the same day his name appeared on this list. The archdiocese has kept mum about Keller's whereabouts and the same for the others on the list, leaving parishioners and victims guessing. What that means to me is there are places like the Fiorenza Retirement Home for Priests here, which the diocese funds. Channel 2 Investigates looked into the history of that retirement center, which is one of several buildings on a campus next door to Herman Park in the Medical Center. We found a few credibly accused priests connected to that address. Charles Shop, accused of abuse, same as Dennis Lynch. We found his name on a 2014 newsletter wishing him a happy birthday. And Anthony Stredney and Dennis Peterson's names surfaced in old white page listings. The Archdiocese tells us none of the priests on the credibly accused list live there now. And no current priest residents are the subject of any criminal investigation or pending charges of any kind. But one priest that is under criminal investigation is Father Manuel La Rosa Lopez. We went looking for him, too. According to court documents, La Rosa Lopez lives here in this suburban southeast Houston neighborhood. And according to these property records, the house is owned by the archdiocese. That house is also just a few feet away from a school zone. Chris Feldman is a Houston civil lawyer who's handled several church abuse cases. The church should take it upon itself to make sure that predator priests are nowhere near children. It's a no-brainer. But the district attorney tells us Father Manuel isn't violating any conditions of his bond. As long as there is accessibility, there is vulnerability. And uh, even though that's not in the bond, uh, and that is quite unfortunate. So one year after this list was released, what relief can victims find? After decades of loyalty, Eduardo left his parish. I think that my ties have finally been broken. Uh, it does not mean that I'm not Catholic. I was always told by my mother, God is everywhere. Late today, the Archdiocese of Galveston-Houston did talk to us about why the church continues to support priests deemed credibly accused of abuse. It's a debate within the church, but we are told it comes down to the code of canon law. The law is very clear that when someone gives themselves over to the priesthood, at that point, the church takes on a responsibility to care for them for the rest of their life. And while it doesn't mean that bishops like doing it, it means that they're bound to uphold the laws themselves. And if they were to disregard these laws, if they were to disregard what Rome tells them to do, then they themselves would be liable to penalties as well. When we asked if that same code of canon law applies to priests convicted of abuse, we were told yes, it does. As for Father Manuel La Rosa Lopez, his trial is scheduled for March. Robert Arnold, KPRC, Channel 2 Investigates.